There are many pastors leading many churches all around the world, but few have had their stars burn brighter and have overcome a more sordid past. Here's Vince Antonucci like you never knew him. This is his story, his E! True Hollywood story. Vince Antonucci's past has always contained many sketchy details. The confusion was only increased when a house fire melted away all his home movies and all of Vince's photo albums. Yeah, the fire was crazy, but you gotta live strong. I, I don't actually have the bracelet, but, but you've seen them. So, uh, so I apologize, but I don't have any like uh, pictures or old home movies to share with you. And so, so I'm not really sure how you're gonna make a, an E! True Hollywood story about me. Vince Antonucci was born on the quiet, otherwise uneventful morning of January 29th, 1970 at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami, Florida. The son of Vincent Dominique and Susan Harriet Antonucci, Vince had a relatively normal upbringing. A loving family, good grades in school, playing with kids in the neighborhood. Soon Vince was off to college, which is when Vince met his future wife, Jennifer Lynn Wilson. They were both immediately attracted to each other, but thought it couldn't work out because, at the time, they were active in rival gangs. I run with the wolf pack. You must run with the man pack. It is the proper thing. Vince and Jen's romance would have to wait. At college, Vince developed an addiction to pop rocks. He was soon scoring pop rocks wherever he could. Vince's pop rocks addiction led to erratic behavior, resulting in a series of arrests. Vince was arrested outside of a ladies' room in Tijuana, Mexico, for repeatedly telling women as they entered, the cameras are only there for your protection. Later, Vince was arrested at a petting zoo in Boise, Idaho, as he walked around in a chef's outfit, inspecting each animal to see if they were, in his words, plump and juicy. Shortly after his release from jail, Vince found himself back behind bars after his arrest at an airport hotel in Wichita, Kansas, for trying to pass two counterfeit $16 bills. Vince knew it was time to get help when he woke up one day lying in a gutter with a vicious hangover and a Happy New Year hat. The date was February 4th. Vince had reached a new low. He picked himself up off the ground, stole a car, and began driving home. Vince had hit rock bottom, and he cried out to God, asking for a sign. At that moment, the skies opened up and a huge storm broke out. From that point on, his life was changed. Yeah, and soon after that, I left, uh, I left my gang, and that was when Jen and I were finally able to get together. Yeah, I had already left my gang, the Man Pack, when Vince decided to leave the Wolf Pack, and I knew at that point that we'd be together forever. Uh, we got married, the wedding was beautiful. I wish you could see it, but all the photos and video were destroyed in the fire. But the reception, it was amazing. After that, our lives started settling down. Well, Vince did struggle to find the right career. Yeah, that, I mean, that's true. I, uh, I always had this dream of, of dancing. It was my passion. And, and so I decided to go for it for a while. And, you know, unfortunately, it was during a time when I was gaining weight. Uh, my weight's always been up, down, up, down, up, down. And it was during like a weight gain phase of my life. So I didn't have the, the prototypical body for it but I wanted to be a Chip and Tails dancer and I didn't care. Yeah, well, I got turned down and, uh, and then I just went through this series of jobs Probably the weirdest was I got this gig as an elephant proctologist. The problem is I have this problem with uh, depth perception. Yeah, and um, oh, and then I, I got another job. I was when we return. Vince's addiction to pop rocks bites back. He returns to prison, and upon his release, his parole agreement stipulates that he must start and pastor a church in Las Vegas. 